Chapter 8 Cats and Rats Are Born The gang's in the lunchroom, minus Jerry. Greg enters unaware of Jerry's accident. He strolls to Frank and Sam, drumming the side of his lunch bag with a spoon. Here, Snipe. Any of you infants need a diaper change? Greg walks on. Joe moves a chair in Greg's path and places a bag in his hand. Greg hesitates before taking a seat. Lunch is on me today. Uh, I'm not hungry, Joe. Joe pushes a box cutter into Greg's side. My little brother is fighting for his life because of your little funny. Trust me, you are starving. Greg's terrified of Joe. What happened? I didn't mean no harm. Eat your lunch. Joe, please tell me what happened. I'm, I'm sorry. Joe can takes control. You're gonna eat every bite of your lunch special. Or I will cut your guts out. Dope head. Greg hears the clicks from Joe's box cutter. He eats his double dose, two chocolate laxatives, and a candy bar laced with four hits of acid. I'm taking Greg home, Chester. He's experiencing illness. How does he look to you? Chester's shocked and flattered Joe Turner even spoke to him. Oh, well, looks like he's about to shit himself to me, Joe. Joe respects Chester for not abandoning his brother. Chester, handle your friends at the end of the table before I do. Joe stops at Frank and Sam. I'm ashamed of you two boys. Joe exits the lunchroom with Greg. Like most people, Frank and Sam are fearful of Joe. Just what in the fuck was that? Was blood dripping from Joe's eyes? It's, it sure as shit looked like it to me. And what happened to Joe's voice? He plump scared hell into me and I ain't afraid of nothing. Someone's gonna pay big time. Chester makes his way to Frank and Sam. Kinda scary, huh fellas? How are we gonna settle this issue? Frank and Sam won't look at Chester. He claps his hands. I'm talking to you two cowards. I'll tell you one thing. You're better off to settle with me. Than Joe Turner. Sam gets in Chester's face. Don't you threaten me. Sit before I hurt you real bad, Sam. I've heard of two left feet, but damn, I've never heard of two left hands. What? Did your parents mix their cheap liquor with polluted Russian river water or what? <laughs> How did you ever throw a football with that clubbed hand anyway? None of the boys have ever brought up the fact that Sam was born deformed. However, his betrayal has brought war. Sam takes Chester's advice and sits, but doesn't approve of anyone making fun of his two left hands. Sam evilized Chester with the intent of getting even. Smartest thing you've ever done, lefty. Let's give Jerry a month to heal. I'm sure he wouldn't want to miss an opportunity to get even with the pukes who left him to die. Sam flies to his feet. I'm tired of your big mouth, motherfucker. Chester grabs Sam's hair, setting him back in his chair. I told you to sit and I mean it. I'm done playing. Your bragging mouse, shut today. Chester leans onto the table with both hands. Neither one of you cowards could carry my jock. So here's the deal. Put together a football team from your side of the river. I'll put together one from mine, backyard style. No helmets, no pads, just my head cracking your head. Chester's big and bad. However, Frank and Sam's pride knows no limit. What's the trophy? Don't worry about a dust collector, Frankie boy. I just want to tattoo some serious pain on two of the town's biggest mama's boys. Sam slams both of his left hands on the table. You're on, bitch. We're the Jets. Like the New York Jets want you, huh, Sam? You keep on believing your embarrassing fairy tale. We see right through your imagination, don't we, Frank? Frank attempts to end Chester's grind. 
We'll call our team, um, the River Rats. Yeah, the River Rats. Sounds about right. A large rodent living on the trash side of town? Fits you for sure. The Blue Cats. Yeah, I'm calling my team the Blue Cats. <laughs> Blue Cats? Because you're a bunch of pussies, that's why. Chester lets Sam's mouth slide. Blue Cats, as in the Blue Channel Catfish. Like from the Mississippi River, boys. Game on, cowards. <laughs>